In this week's edition of Friday Five, we consider several Final Cut Pro 10 tips for YouTubers. While it's never a bad idea to take a standalone photo for your YouTube thumbnails, sometimes you just don't have time to do that. And in those instances, you can use Final Cut Pro 10's export ability to export a screenshot and use that screenshot as a YouTube thumbnail. So just go to the share menu and then select save current frame, just double click on that and then choose your export file format. I choose JPEG and then I just like to rename it screenshot. And then I'll right click on screenshot and select make default so I can use the command E shortcut to quickly export a screenshot wherever the playhead is. So I'll just move the playhead and then use command E and that will bring up the interface for exporting the screenshot. So just click next and then name your screenshot. We'll call this YouTube thumbnail bootcamp external drive and the export begins. It should only take a few seconds. And now we can click show to reveal the location of our screenshot and let's open it up in preview. And that makes for a pretty good YouTube thumbnail. It's a good idea to get familiar with YouTube's recommended upload encoding settings. This includes things like audio codec, video codec, frame rate, bit rate, etc. But the most important thing perhaps is the bit rate because that not only determines the size of the video, but also the quality, uh, whether or not it looks good as a 4K or 1080p video. You can see 4K recommended 35 to 45 megabits per second based on a 24, 25 or 30 frames per second video. Obviously the higher your frames per second, the higher the bit rate recommendation is. And then there's also recommendations for audio bit rate as well. So once you get all that down, you can use an app called Compressor, which is sort of a companion to Final Cut Pro 10, and I highly recommend it. It's a $50 app, and it allows you to configure encoding settings way beyond what Final Cut Pro does by itself. So just click the plus sign in the bottom left hand corner, select new setting. For format, choose QuickTime Movie, and then give it a name. In my case, I'm going to say 4K YouTube, and then 24 frames per second, because that's what I shoot most of my videos at, and then click OK. And then we can start configuring the encoding settings. So under the general tab, not much there to really configure. You can click where it says optimize for network use. That's pretty much the only thing we'll do there. Now click the video tab and then you should see where it says QuickTime settings. You want to click change there. Under compression type, choose H.264 and then set the data rate or bit rate to 45,000 kilobits per second or 45 megabits per second. And then under encoding, choose faster encode to use Intel Quick Sync and then click OK. Next up, select the audio tab and then click change next to QuickTime settings. And then select for format AAC, rate 4800 kilohertz. And then for quality, select best and bit rate 320 and then click OK. All right, so we're good to go there, folks. We have our new compression setting. You can just close out of compressor. Now switch back to Final Cut Pro 10. Click our share menu button, click add destination, double click on compressor settings, and then select your custom setting there and then click OK. All right. So you see the 4K YouTube 24 frames per second is there and ready to be used. So now it's just a matter of going in and selecting that under the share menu. There we go. So you can see the size 1.2 gigabytes estimated. And when you're ready to export, all you need to do is click the next button. And then give it a name and then click save to export this video with YouTube's recommended encoding settings. You can map additional keyboard shortcuts for exports by using system preferences keyboard. Just click the shortcuts tab and then select app shortcuts and then click the plus button and then select Final Cut Pro as your application. Now let's head back over to Final Cut Pro and get our export menu title. So go to file and then share and then find the export setting you wish to map to a shortcut. So in this case, 4K YouTube 24 frames per second. To make it easier, you can go to add destination under the share menu and simply copy the name of the export setting. And then we can paste that over in the keyboard section of system preferences. Don't forget your ellipsis and then add your shortcut. I'm going to use command Y for YouTube. Next click add 
and we're good to go. So let's test this out. So the first thing you can do is just go up to the file menu and then make sure the shortcut's there. So file, share, and you can see it there, command Y along with command E. So you can use both of those to export a screenshot or export your YouTube video. So command E for your screenshot or command Y for your YouTube video. Super simple, super easy. YouTube's end screen feature is a great way to drive traffic to other videos on your channel, but you have to make sure that the background of your video when the end screen appears allows those end screens to stand out. One way to do this is by using a blur. So I just added a blur to the end of my video like this, and then what we'll do is we'll simply fade that blur in. Just right click on the clip, show video animation, double click on the blur, and then drag the initial keyframe over to lend it a nice fade animation. That looks good, but I think it can be a little more subtle. So we're just going to drag out and let it animate a little bit slower, maybe even a little more than that. Yeah, that's right. So when those end screens appear right now, they're going to stand out against that blur background and it's going to look really good. Okay, so let's go ahead and export this video and upload it to our YouTube channel. And then I'll show you what it looks like when I add the end screen. Okay, so the video has been uploaded. We're now at the end screen and annotation section of the video settings. And we'll just play it back until the blur kicks in. That looks good. So we're gonna add the end screen elements. We'll just add two videos and we'll add a subscribe button right over here. There we go. And we'll finesse it a little bit. Now let's play it back and see how it looks. You can see it blur out and those end screens kick in. That looks really good with that blur. Shoot me a thumbs up if you agree. And then lastly, sometimes it's great to create a teaser for social media that encompasses portions of your full video clip. So for that, I think it's a good idea to create a brand new project just for the social media promo video. So what I do is select all the contents of the timeline, go up to edit, select copy, and then go back up to file, select new project. So this is a brand new project just for the social media promo. And that allows us to alter the contents of the timeline to suit the needs of your promo clip. So we'll just paste all the clip contents in and now we can just do whatever we want to all the clip contents, remove whatever we want, make it a certain length of time. I like to keep my promos 30 seconds or less. So just cut out all that. You can remove the dialogue, add your own music if you wish to do that. The point is, is that this allows you to create your own custom promo video without touching your original project. And that's pretty handy. So ladies and gentlemen, this has been a look at five YouTube oriented Final Cut Pro 10 tips for Mac users. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. If you appreciated this video, again, leave me a thumbs up. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.